folks, welcome along to the podcast here at Bannerburn House. This is podcast number eight, I think. Um, okay. So, and I'm here as normal with my sidekick, Lynn. How are yeah, you? Yeah, I'm fine, thank you. So, uh, it's a beautiful day outside um, compared to the weekend we just had. It was a bit wet and... Well, yesterday uh, it was torrential rain in yeah. the afternoon, yeah. <laughs> yep. And uh, just recently we had um, the Red Arrows fly past the house to go and do a flyby over our Wallace Monument, which is now... How old is it now? I want to say 170 something, but I, please don't quote me on that. Right. So anyway, it was his birthday yesterday on Saturday anyway. So the Red Arrow's on a fly pass and we got it. Well, when I say we got it, um, it was recorded and put onto the Facebook page. And you can see it there if you plan to have a wee look. So this week we were interviewing a husband and wife uh, duo today. Um, not at the same time because we didn't want to cause any arguments. Um, just in case one said something that wasn't um, right. And, well, <laughs> the two of them are lovely. Um, and that was Mike and Alison Ogden, I guess. Is it Ogden? Ogden. Yeah. Um, and they were lovely. Um, yeah. So we interviewed Alison first, and then we interviewed Mike after it. And Mike told us a wee story about why he's connected to the house as well yeah, at the end. Very so it's, interesting legend. Yeah, yes. so it's worthwhile listening to the end for that one. And uh, but we've got a few events coming up, but we'll tell you at the end. But for time being, I think we'll just let you listen to the two interviews. So enjoy. Hello, folks. Welcome to the latest podcast of Bannockburn House, and we're sitting in what we call the Tartan Room, which is known as the Wilson Room, and we're here to interview our Alison. How are you doing, Alison? Fine, thank you. And uh, what's your role in the house at the present moment, so you can tell yours? In the shop. Um, that's where I started and I've not escaped since. Right. And um, is it just a daily shop thing to do, or can you elaborate a bit more? What you do no, we all make uh, lots of things at home, and we do a lot of crafting hours at home. And then we're in the shop on a Wednesday and we've taken the shop out to shop on tour as it's been um, early on this year because we've not been able to have events in the house. So yeah. mainly in the shop. Yeah. So as you've got to just say you go out to other events and that yeah. and we pop up yeah. shop here and there. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So um, on, on the, the aspect of the, the, the shop in the house, right? So how did you get from daily life to becoming a member of the, the shop team? Uh-huh. So where did it all begin <laughs> and why did you come to Panama? Well, we have our granddaughter to blame for this. Um, we knew nothing about Bannockburn House and she lives in Nenstry and we were still on babysitting duties at that point, going to pick her up from school and we, we always wondered where the sign for Bannockburn House came from. So eventually the trees were cut down a bit. This was sort of after COVID as well and we finally discovered where the house was and uh, it really started with a Christmas fair. Um, a very brief visit to a Christmas fair and at that point we were in for, I don't think we were even in for two hours and in that place we were just blown away by the place, signed up as volunteers and it was a few months later with one thing and another that we actually got to start and it was at Bannock Yarn, that was our first first experience of that. We started in the toilet so the only way is up. And then uh, I became involved in the shop from then on in. Never. Yeah. And we'll be interviewing your husband. As, as oh, this, this is the first um, time we're going to do a Mr. and Mrs. like interview. So your, your first name, we're going to be your husband. Good uh, luck shortly. with that one. Um, but um, I remember the Barnagan fair well mm-hmm. because that's the first time I met the both of you. Mm-hmm. And I can remember what happened as well because um you, you gave me a row didn't you <laughs> yeah. was brave. I, One, I, I remember you were um you were cleaning down the chairs uh, oh. for the bannock yarn yeah. make sure they're all clean and tidy and presentable mm-hmm. for the, the fest the festivities that were coming up and i was asked to check on the lighting with two other people oh, yes. and i couldn't reach so instead of going and getting a ladder i took one of the yep. chairs and i got a bollock in yes <laughs> <laughs> yes that's um uh, Mike's very health and safety conscious, especially in the shop. If there's anything to go in the upstairs cupboard, he's sent for a ladder. <laughs> right. Yes, I, 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 yes, I, I do remember it now. <clears throat> right. Yes. 
But um, mm -hmm. I've got to admit, um, after that day, it's, it's, I never put us off, like, yeah. you, cause I've, I've said in a previous episode that you're my favourite anyway, so, oh, that's fine. so that's and, okay. and Sheila, and Liz, and, uh, stop it. and, and Fiona. Stop Bruce Forsyth so, is alive but, and well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so, so that, that chance visit just in the Christmas uh, fair yep. you came along and you fell in love, so just, just give us a brief description of what happened when you came through what what happened oh, when you first seen the house well coming up the drive you just went wow um coming into the house it's just like i mean it was all done up for christmas it was beautiful and you go about and you, your jaw just drops every corner you turn so mm. i'm speaking with my hands as i usually do um it, it was just such a, a warm welcoming atmosphere the whole atmosphere of the house is yeah. just very warm and welcoming Right. And we were hooked. For day hooked. one, yeah. I always Absolutely. say it's as if the house gives you a big hug. It does. The door, oh, yeah. constantly. Um, so, I'll, coming away from the house, um, what did you do before? I was a teacher. And when Mike took early retirement, I stopped work. Shortly after that, um, <laughs> I became involved in making the dresses for my son's wedding. That sounds bad. Uh, the dresses for the wedding. And then... After that, it was um, grandchildren, babysitting, elderly parents, elderly relatives. And then all that stopped um, a couple of years ago. Sophie didn't need picked up from school with no after school care to do. And then my mum died last year. So for the first time in years, we didn't have any, we actually felt as if we were retired. And we thought, yeah. what are we going to do with this? And we came up here and that was it. We've been can't get rid of us now. It's... So would you say that the the house has been like a, a lifeline for you? Oh, it's yes. given you Yeah. I don't want to say purpose, but it's given you it does. something to do. Yes, it does, because so many people, they get to retirement and then they don't know what to do with themselves. My sister's just retired and she's been off cruising three times this year. That's since March. So she will have to knuckle down and get hard to work to retire. But <laughs> it's a bit far to come from Glasgow for here. Yeah. Otherwise, we could. Yeah, mm. and um, you, you don't stay in the banner for someone else, no. you stay a wee bit further out. Yep. Uh, near come Bernal, I think it is, I believe. We need a passport. Um, <laughs> we do. But mm -hmm. yeah, you're here, though. I know I'll speak to Mike and you'll see him in uh, Mike's interview next, anyway. But I know Mike comes down to do the garden a lot. And mm. um, is it just a Wednesday you come down unless there's something else on? Yeah, uh, well, there's shop tours um, when the tours are on the first Sunday of every month. We're here and other events like we're here on Saturday for an event. Um, normally he's up here on a Monday for the garden and I'm at home crafting for the house. And then we're both up on a Wednesday and then I sit at night and stitch or crochet or whatever I'm doing. So basically it's when you're at, you're at home, you're still yeah. Yeah, working yeah. for the house. Oh, yeah. Well, when I say working for the house, you're yeah. still doing things for yeah. the house. Yeah, yeah, so you yeah. Can Amanda... Go. We were doing a, a workshop on the cockades for the, the blue bonnets and Amanda was in on that and she'd said, now I understand why your hours at home are so long. The the number of hours we put in, it's usually over 100. So, and that's yeah. why, because we, we all do what we love and it's for a grand old lady that needs a little TLC. Right. <laughs> so a few questions we ask everybody we interview nowadays, right, Ooh. is what's your favourite part of the house. Now, I know you say you work in the shop, so we'll push the shop aside, oh. and if you pick somewhere else in the house that you say is your favourite part of the house? Well, I've not been in it very often, but I do like the kitchen. I love that big green range. But I think my favourite bit's a funny thing. Going down the back stair, there's a lovely wee window, and it's all brick, restored brick, or stonework round about mm. it. And that always fascinates me. It's a funny yeah. wee thing, but I like that. Also, <laughs> very partial to the toilets. <laughs> and if, if you had an event you could do at the house um, that's not been Ooh. done before, uh, what would you like to do? And if you can't think of it, don't worry about it. I could. Um, our first experience of the house was Bannet Yarn, which was very much knitting, which is not my, my thing at all. I can knit, but I don't enjoy it. Right. But I would love to see a, a big kind of... Um, tartan event we've got a huge history of tartan in the house which we knew nothing about before we started here mm -hmm. but um i would love to see a big tartan event big kind of fabric-y based thing i don't know how yeah. it would work but 
Well, we At did hold um, Tales of Tarn. Oh, um, even holiday. <laughs> uh, so you missed it, yeah. I missed it. Um, which was, uh, was a huge success. Yeah. Um, there was um, Tales of Tarn tour we done recently. Mm-hmm. Well, when I said we done, it was mm. um, most of the, the villa guys, the history team yep. guys and that and that. Um, and there's also the Jack in January as well, what we try and plan. Yes. Things but you would like to see like that. a... I would. would well, like a car been, walk type thing, you were I meaning rather than just a general museum type thing. Anything involving tartan. We were at the tartan show in the V&A in Dundee. That was absolutely fascinating. And it got you thinking, and I know there's been talk of a tartan museum or centre or something in Bannockburn. House would be brilliant for that. Yeah. That would be fantastic. But we've got a long way to go before we get to that. But something on tartan because we we were blown away by the the range of tartan, even in these big tartan bags that you get to put quilts and things in, storage things and everything. You know, it's, it's such a, a worldwide thing. So, so well, yeah, yeah some more tartan. tartan-y. Some yes, tartan. I think so. Yeah, that's something that. Probably mm. could become a thing in the future, mm. anyway. Mm-hmm. There's, there's a lot of things you can do with that, that oh, yeah. subject, anyway. Yeah. Um, so, right, so in the house itself, there is there's a lot of places that need repaired. Um, and if you had enough money, where would you start? In the house or in the plan? In the in house. The, in the house. Oh, I would love to see the dining room and the kitchen being upgraded in some way so that you could have uh, you could do like afternoon teas and things mm-hmm. especially for following the tours or lunches i mean whenever there's anything on it's all brought in covered in cling film i would love to see the, the kitchen being restored so that you could actually use it and um more for and the dining room everywhere in the house needs deserves to be upgraded as much as we can yeah. but i think the kitchen and the and the dining room yeah. would be one, unless it's a shop. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like the shop. Um, mm-hmm. So, yeah, so the, the shop, as I say, that's your main area, mm. right? And uh, you just went on about the blue bonnets and different other things. Um, the shop, as I say, it's, it's, it's hidden, a, well, when I say hidden away, it's it quite out of the way. Of mm-hmm. So when people come in, they come in the main door and you'd have to go quickly to your right through the next mm-hmm. set of doors mm-hmm. and quickly to your left yeah. before the foot of the stairs. Mm-hmm. So um, is there anything in the shop that you would like to see in the shop that maybe bring more people to come and see? Ooh. Well, there's tons of things. <laughs> Loads of things. <laughs> we, we, we're always changing. We're always coming up with different things, uh, like wee ghosties, you know, silly wee things yeah. that show in our hedgehogs. Lizzie's blue bonnets, they are just flying they're yeah. amazing um i think uh, i think i would like to see more like stuff for children because if although we're not getting people in very much just now because of the the difficulties of having an event yeah. but for you know, looking ahead to christmas as we've started doing things for children because you know they've they've people are passing this on to them yeah so we've got to get kids involved as well yeah and, uh, and I do know that you've got an exclusive wax melts in the shop as well. Yes. Uh, the library mm-hmm. and Bonnie, Bonnie Prince. Bonnie Prince Charlie. Yeah. Yeah. So two exclusive melts that people can see if they go. Mm. Well, hopefully it'll be online at some point. Mm-hmm. And uh, we'll probably see it uh, at the Christmas Fair as well. Yeah. But um, yeah, so talk about Christmas Fair. Um, that's going to be the next big thing for the shop as well. Yes. Um, and you'll be looking forward to that, I'm guessing. Yes, it's always great fun. And this year we, we, <laughs> we have the luxury of not being right opposite the open front door. So it will be a wee bit warmer where we are, just outside <laughs> the shop and much nearer to taking the things through from the shop to put on the tables. So, so make sure they're warm yes. in the house for you then. Absolutely, yes. Right, so well, all yeah, I can say just now is, is thanks very much for coming along. You're very and, welcome. And an interview for the podcast to tell people more about the shop and yourself. Mm-hmm. And um, people, as I say, when they come into the, uh, the house, they can come into the shop. Yes. Get a wee hello. Come and ask her for a selfie and then post it on <laughs> Facebook for us. Say, I seen you on the YouTube, the YouTube podcast. Well, the shop's open <laughs> Wednesdays between 11 and 1. Um, so, yeah. And if there's events on at the house, we're usually around somebody out the four of us will be there. So, sorry, there are tasks for you. Everybody that's watching, 
come along to the house between 11 and 1 on a Wednesday, buy something from the shop, <laughs> then get a selfie mm. and then post it on Facebook. That's a challenge for you all. Mm. But for the time being, as I say, thank you very much, Alison, for coming welcome. along. And uh, we'll maybe get back on at some other time just to talk more about the shop or something. Pushing your luck now, Paul. Well, <laughs> well, <laughs> we'll hope, hope we'll get all you ladies in the yes. shop and give them a big yes. group interview. That would be great. Yeah. But for the time being, thank you very much. You're welcome. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Hello, guys. Welcome along to the second part of this podcast. We spoke to Alison uh, briefly just the other night, and now we've got our better, well, better half, or better, I'll say that's your partner, mate. But we've the got other our half. other half, um, other Mike, half. here. How are you doing, Mike? I'm doing very well, Paul. Thank you very much indeed. And anybody that sees us, this, we're always having a laugh together in the house. So if you see us together, we're up to mischief if you're ever in the house and see us together. But um, yeah, he's my, he's my good friend. But anyway, Mike, thanks for coming along to do this podcast with us and do this interview. Absolute pleasure, Paul. And how are you doing today? I know you've been out in the garden in the house. Yes, I've uh, been in the polytunnels. My uh, my favourite haunt, I think, in the gardens uh, seem to have been uh, tomatoes. Tomatoes and more, even more tomatoes. So, <laughs> yes, I've been in the polytunnels this morning. <laughs> so, you've come along to Bannerburn House to help out, and is, is this the main area you help in as the garden? Mainly, yes. Occasionally, if there's an event on weekends, I'll help Alison and the shop girls in the shop just do mm. things. And if yeah. there's an outside event, I'll go along and help at that setting up. You like to be cheerleader at the side of the tables? And... That's the ones. Yep, yeah. that's it. <laughs> that's the ones. <laughs> So <laughs> tell me about, um, you're in the garden, there's a lot of projects on in the garden just now, like there's the, the new path network that's getting put in. Yes, uh, we're expecting uh, a load of aggregate coming on Wednesday, I believe, to finish off the pathways, um, which were, I think, uh, initially done about a year and a half ago. They were done, but the top finishing coat wasn't wasn't done then, but uh, we've now got funding for that, and it's arriving on Wednesday. On Wednesday, so I hope that'll be done in the next few weeks then. Yep. Yeah, no, and sure. is it going to be extended, I believe, the pathway? Is it going to, uh, during the course of time, obviously, not on Wednesday, but during the course of... I do believe there were pathways across the South Lawn, which they've found, and I think the intention is to try and do something with those, and also mm -hmm. further down towards what was the old Victorian gardens, they found an old, what was an old water feature, so mm -hmm. I do believe they're going to try and uh, extend the pathways around there as well. Yeah. That's uh, quite ambitious, but yeah. we need ambition. <laughs> but the gombo when the, the community trust bought over the house, the garden was needing rescued badly. But I don't know if you if you were here. At the I've time, I've seen pictures of the seen gardens pictures. then, and uh, something as high as an elephant's eye. I think the weeds were pretty high <laughs> in the back. So yeah, it yeah, needed a lot of work on it. Yeah. So right, so you do the garden, you're volunteering, so. Um, just like I've asked your lovely wife, Alison, what, when, what did you think about the house when you first came to see it that day? It was, as Alison has said, there was just a pull. I don't know what it was. It was as if there was, a, there was a heart, a strong heart beating. And you could see around you that there was lots and lots of bits needed attention. But it was old lady, but needing TLC. Yeah. And it just pulled us in. And it was yeah. as simple as that. And when you first came into the house itself, um, did you have the same feeling as Alice and Alison said, like, like most of us say it's like the house welcomed you in. It's, it's almost like it gives you a big hug sometimes, I say to people. Absolutely, 100%. And I think one thing for me, when I first came to the house, you come through the porch, you come to the lay hall, and I looked up, and that ceiling just took my breath away. Yeah. Took my breath away. It was absolutely fantastic. One question I, I never ask people is like, when, when you come into the house and it, as you say, it grabs you, like grabs yeah. a hold of you, it pulls you in, and you end up becoming a volunteer and you want to do more for the house. Have you ever experienced anything like that anywhere else you've went? Or is it just... Never. No. Never. This is just, it's uh, uh, another, uh, another episode in our life completely. It's taken, it's very pleasantly taken over a lot of our life, but we just love it. Yeah. It's not hard work. In the interview with Alison, she was saying how um, he's both retired uh, from your, your, your job as you had. Um, what was the job you had before you retired from? Uh, initially, when I left school, I was in the Merchant Navy for seven years. Oh, I was right. an engineer, sailed quite a lot of places in the world, Far East and Australia. 
And I ended up in BP Oil in Grangemouth. Oh, and I was there for nearly 30 years yeah. before I took early retirement, which was uh, very pleasant. The idea was always going to get a nice job with no responsibilities. Well, we're still looking for a job. I've still got responsibilities, but I'm not paid for it. <laughs> so, yeah, so then, as I often said, you both retired and the house gave you something to do. Um, when you came along, you became a volunteer yeah. and it's given yeah. you something to do. And um, is that the same kind of feeling you've got as well? It's, it's like it oh. basically you were twiddling your thumbs maybe in the house, nothing pretty worth nothing uh, to do because the kids have all grown up and... Yes, I think we did have some spare time, but it's we're not the type of people that um, we'd always find something to do. So you know, we didn't mm. sit around doing nothing. No. But uh, this has given us a lot more purpose, and because it's a benefit to so many people, it's, yeah. it's, it gives you a good feeling. Yeah. And like I've said, I've said, I've said to Alison as well, and I'm going to say to yourself, we always ask uh, our guests that come on, all the volunteers that come on to be interviewed, um, all the events we have held at the house, is there, is there an event that you would like to see at the house? Yes, I've always thought that this is Bannockburn House. Now, I don't know if Bannockburn Village has a gala day or a summer fight day. Here must be the place. And I do understand that because we don't have a good car park at home, that's yeah. not helping. But for me to have a Bannockburn Fate or Gala Day, summer fate day would be fabulous here. Unbelievable. Is that like having like your your crown and the queen and why and not? That? Yeah. Why not? Yeah. Uh, I, get that. I do know we had well obviously there's been a lot of changes this year in the house. There are a lot of events that we normally have have been cancelled this year. Yeah. Um so we usually have um like a children's day and a, a harvest festival and mm -hmm. a summer fair. Um and as I say a lot of these have been cancelled because of changes, mostly personnel and other things yes, in the house. Yes, yes. But um, I think next year we'll be hoping to bring these things back, um, as well as other different types of events that we've not tried, which the house would be ideal for. Um, and also we've got like the weddings that's coming into the house now. Yes, so yeah. we had a big wedding back in July, and yeah. we've got, I think we've got five weddings next year, I think, if I remember, mm -hmm. um, unless they're going to add a few more in. Um, but so you would like to see like a children's gala? Yes, yes. Um, that, that sounds like a hash idea, to be honest. Um, yeah. But um, yeah, we could, we, the, the car park issue has been an issue for us. And yes, yes. We do yes. get help from uh, local farm uh, near to us that allow us to park the cars on uh, their site. Where I, actually, I think that's where I was speaking to Alison a few days ago, and you said that's when we first met. It was and indeed, was Paul. Up. Yes, I, I do remember <laughs> it quite clearly. You were so particular. I think we had 18 and a half inches between each car. If you were too far, oh. But yes, that was the first time we met Paul. And I thought, oh, I don't know about him, but. You still like that, to be honest. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. I don't love you any less, anyway. Oh, thank the Lord. <laughs> um, but yeah, so we do use the park now down there, and it's quite a useful yeah. thing. So when it comes to the gala, we could always have some of that if it's something we might find yeah. in the future. Yeah. Um, would you like to be the guy crowned as a gala queen? <laughs> well, I've got the chaise long sitting over there, so I'm sure something could be arranged. <laughs> no, but yeah, I understand what you're saying. It's a good children's day. It brings yeah, in a lot of absolutely. It's a good thing. It's a good scene. If it's a nice day, yep. what a happy children. So, yeah. yeah. I, I think that uh, is, is good because it also brings in younger people, younger parents. And I know that the young parents don't have an awful lot of time, but we do need to try and introduce Bannockburn House to younger adults as well yeah. to try and get even half a day, a few hours, whatever, getting people more more people involved. Yeah. I've got to say as well as as Bannockburn House is for the community, so yeah. that would make a perfectly good argument as well. Yeah. yeah. Um. So next thing is, as I've asked, if you had the money to repair any part of this house, what would you go for first? That's a hard one, Paul. <laughs> um. I've already said one of the first things I saw was the ceiling. Mm -hmm. Get it professionally cleaned, not painted, cleaned. Yeah. Because that ceiling, as it is now, is, is absolutely beautiful, but it does need to be cleaned and so, you know, people are aware of it. Because I do, I think, um, one of the history team I did speak to about that, and they mm -hmm. said the definition of the plasterwork 
is absolutely brilliant on that ceiling because yeah. it hasn't had an awful lot of coats of paint on it. Yeah. Uh, so the definition is there. So get it cleaned and whatever treatment they use to sort of highlight it more. Yeah. Be lovely. Yeah. Like. And have to strengthen that ceiling as well because um, it's a lot of weight in that ceiling. Yep. So it doesn't absolutely. Be yeah. So yeah. First thing you see when you come in the house, you like to say, that's oh, so it makes sense in fabulous. that aspect, yeah. yeah. So, well, all I can say is, like, thank you very much for coming on board and being one of our guests today, along with your lovely wife. And uh, we will try and see, um, I, I do know we're going to try and uh, interview, like, Margaret and that in the garden, yeah, and yeah. hopefully do a group thing in the garden with all of the volunteers that help in the garden as well. So we might get back on camera then. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, there is one thing I would like and it's something that drew me to the house, which yeah. some people in the history team do know. I think Lynn's probably knows what I'm going to say. Is in my family, going back, there was a legend which has been passed down to us. Mm -hmm. And basically the legend stated, and I think it was my great-great-grandfather times six, right. was actually killed by uh, royalist troops in 1746 for assisting Bonnie Prince Charlie's Troops. Um, we don't exactly know where people that bit saying the legend that he was actually beheaded in the Tower of London, but I've looked into that and that doesn't appear to be true. But all the characters in the legend and the place called Arncliffe is mentioned, a blacksmith shop is mentioned, and I've taken it right back. And there's a huge amount of truth in this legend. So when it became Jacobites and Bonnie Prince Charlie, I thought, hmm. so there is a small family connection. So that's been something for me. Um, you know, I've checked out a lot about this legend yeah. and it does seem to be true because there's a, a lot of skirmishing apparently just south of Penrith and that's where this family came from. Right. So there you go. So got a bit of connection. There is another ah. connection there as well. Yeah. So that was another pull. It yeah. was Bonnie Prince Charlie from his bed said, come <laughs> on, help me. <laughs> Save the house. So, yeah, <laughs> save the house. No, that was, that was interesting. I didn't know that myself. That was really interesting. No, so, no, I'll show you the much. legend uh, sometime, Paul, and you can no, have a look problem. at it. That's good. Well, again, as I say, thank you very much for coming along. Come out and uh, let us interview you, and we'll be speaking to you again soon. Okay, thanks thank very you. much, Paul. Thank you very much for having me. Take care. And my good wife, of course. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Hi folks, welcome back. Now, there you go, that was Mike and Alison. That was yeah. a, a good wee conversation with them too. Uh, Mike, I'm always having a laugh with Mike every time I see him. Uh, and Alison's definitely my favourite. And um, Sylvia and Fiona and Liz and whoever else I've missed. But <laughs> definitely Alison. <laughs> but yeah, so what's happening anyway, Lynn? It's Lynn so. so we have quite a few events slowly coming back onto the calendar. We've also had uh, a few groups coming in doing the AGMs and doing some private tours. So they've got, we uh, put on a buffet for them that they wanted a nice. buffet and things like that. And then they've also uh, requested tour around other places in the grounds as well. So they managed to get that. Great stuff. And people can easily book this from those, their own groups, can't they? Yeah, you can uh, pop a message through on our Facebook page or just send a message mm. to the admin at bannockburnhouse.scot. Yep. Uh, and just ask and then give us an inquiry and we'll so one of the team members will be able to help you out. Yeah. And I recently had a, a couple of people that have got their own podcasts and their own blogs. They've came in and done um, a wee spiel on Bannockburn House as well. One being on the paranormal side and one being on the normal day-to-day -day house thing uh, and some of the history. And likewise, if people want to do something like that and they're going to promote the house, we're open to that as well, yeah. aren't we? So, so um, anything else that we're, we've missed? Uh, well, we've got a few events going on. Yeah. Um, so we've got um, the next ones. Um, well, there are a few of them. The next couple of ones coming up are booked out, aren't they? Like yeah. the mediumship nights booked Yeah, out. the 15th is booked out we also are open for open doors but the tickets for that sold out very quickly yeah i noticed that, that within was... about a week of them being published on the main website mm -hmm. so um, unfortunately then, we don't have any tickets for them so but... they're all sold out and i'm still getting phone calls about that so there's, yeah. there's a, a, a big massive waiting list for the open days but if they can't get to the open days there's october the october first the last sunday the first sunday of the month yeah we we have a public tour that will be our last 
public tour of the that's season. What I was going to say I was going to say the last tour of the month, but last tour of the season, <laughs> last yeah. Tour of the season. Uh, and then we shut down the house to the public. Yeah. We'd, within reason, we have other events going on, yeah. but we start to close down. Around about the time of year, it does get a bit darker, and a lot of the rooms need that light. Yeah, um, so, the upper floors. Yeah. Sort of struggle but, with the with the uh, shorter nights, uh, yeah. shorter days. Sorry. Yeah, so if, as like I said, if, with open days being sold out, if people have missed out on that, they should get onto the website and book the the tour day in October. And is it easy enough to do that? Yeah, well, you just go onto our website, which is uh, www.backburnhouse.scot. And they should you can put a thing on the screen somewhere yeah. um, when we upload the video yeah. and just click on that. And then you can go through to our What's On page and you can book any of the events. So there you go, that's that. And then coming into October, October is a big month for my side of the things. It's like our Christmas, it's Halloween. Yeah. Um, just now, on the time of this recording, we still have got two tickets for the first event of the Halloween weekend, which is the mediumship night, which is um, £10 a ticket, and there's still two of them left. And that's from, uh, the event starts at 20 past 7 and finishes at half 10. The VIP tickets that was for that, uh, there were 16 tickets for a mini ghost hunt after it, they're completely sold out. Yeah, uh, they were snapped gone. up really quite quick. Um, then on the Saturday the 28th is our paranormal night, and that's sold out as well, unfortunately. Um, which brings us to the Sunday. The Sunday looks yeah. like this. This is I'm quite excited about this, even though I'll not be taking part in the morning one. So in the morning, what are we doing? So from 11 till 4, we have a treat. What's it? Tricks and treats. Tricks and treats. Uh, which it, yeah. is a, spe a special Halloween event for uh, under 16s, so 2 to 16, you yeah. come along and get a ticket with a parent mm -hmm. or a guardian. And they have the option of actually buying a pumpkin as well. At the very end. The the details of this is still being finalised, but there could be a few surprises in there somewhere. It's Halloween. But as I say, it's, it's Halloween. Kids go trick-or-treating. We have to have something for them. Yeah. So that's what we're doing here at Bannerburn House that day. There is still tickets available, I believe. There, there's for... quite a few tickets still available for that, but you yeah. still do have a few weeks before yeah. that. Yeah, and it's no longer went live, to be honest, as well. Yeah, it? that's so, just gone live. And is it three different time slots as well? Uh, there yeah. is... You can get the three different time slots yeah, online. Yeah, it's all on the website. Um, but it's between, you say, 11 and 4 yeah. p.m. So you'll get the information there, and um, the kids will hopefully enjoy that. Especially pick a pumpkin and then you take it home. And I'm sorry, parents, but you're going to have to carve that pumpkin at home with them. So, or we could do the old fashioned way, the old tum shee. Yeah, that'll, that'll really well, get you uh, crafting. I'll give you a knife <laughs> and you can do that one. But yeah, they're definitely doing pumpkin picking at the end if you want to pick a pumpkin. And then that brings us to the last event of the Halloween uh, program, which is later on that night on the Sunday, we're going to have a Victorian style ghost hunt. No gadgets. No electronics, uh, and there's going to be no torches. The only thing we're going to have is candlelight. Unfortunately, it's going to have to be battery operated because you can't have naked flames in the house. We don't want to repeat uh, the fire that happened in the, the drawing room, which is now called the burnt room, for obvious reasons. And um, we're going to go around the house, and uh, there's going to be a few ghost stories, ghost hunting, uh, seances, mirror scrying, you name it, um, without all the gadgets. The only time we might let you use a gadget as such is for your mobile phone if you want to take a picture because we always like to get yeah. memories captured on these things and that will be the only time. We will we'll chuck you out and start a battle of bannock burn if you bring your phone out and you start using apps uh, and that will be it. But no, as I say, complete Victorian type night, no electronics, just candlelight and I am so looking forward to it. The tickets are still available. There's, yep. I think there's about 19 left. At yeah, we still have a few for them. Yeah, so if you find that on the website, which is? www.bannockburnhouse.scot so There you go. Go in there and you can book your tickets for that. So, as I say, there's these events. Um, yeah, so if you want to plan an AGM here, uh, private events here, um, give us a shout. We'll see what we can do to host uh, these things for you. Um, we also have um, weddings that are happening here. Well, probably the next wedding or next year. Um, but if you fancy a wedding here, get in contact. We are happy to see what we can do to make your day special. And there's various other events we can hold here as well. So just contact us. You'll get the contact us 
uh, part on the website as well. Yeah, on the or yeah. drop in on Facebook and drop us a message as well. Um, not forgetting the shop now, because we just spoke to Alison, I shouldn't yep. care about the shop. Um, we've got the shop, you can come and visit. Now, I think I set a challenge to everybody in the podcast. Yes, you did. Um, if I mind right, I've asked you to come into the shop between 11 and 1, is it? Yeah, on 11 Wednesday? and 1 on Wednesday. Uh, come into the shop 11, between 11 and 1, buy something for the shop and get a selfie with, with uh, Alison and then post it on her Facebook page. Or one uh, of the other teams. Aye. One of the members uh, of the team. Yeah, you can get another team, but preferably Alison because it was <laughs> because we had just interviewed Alison, um, and uh, as I say, we'll make her we'll make her famous basically. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, come in and be honest, you won't be disappointed. That shop is so it's it's, it's quite a, a petite wee shop, and it's it's got a lot of different things there that you will you'll probably like myself want to buy everything. Um, but come and visit, get a photo with Alison, buy something to the shop, photo on Facebook, great stuff. And I might see about if we can get somebody doing that. I might maybe get a wee prize organised, maybe. I'll, I'll work on that one. But yeah, let's see what we can do with this. So, but for the time being, um, as I say, you've got plenty there to go by. Events, plan your own events, visit the shop, visit the house, become a volunteer. Um, I don't know if I missed anything out there. Well, um, if you want to watch the space for the Christmas. Uh, oh, fair. I forgot about that. The Christmas fair will be... Yeah. At the, the I do know the date is the second and the third of December that yeah. weekend, but all the information, tickets and things like that are not for sale at the moment. But watch this space, and we will do a an actual um, podcast about the Christmas fair at some point as well in the near future. But that is something to look forward to. We're all looking forward to yeah. it, even though we're always knackered after it. We always look forward to the Christmas. We fair. might even be able to do a little video during it and have a chat with Santa. Maybe. And just to clarify, I'm not Santa. I'm not being Santa. <laughs> as much as people keep telling me I should be Santa, it's the I'm real not Santa. Being Santa. What are you on about? Yeah, real Santa's going to be there. Yeah, I'm not it's... standing in for him. Yeah. No chance. There's no standing Santas here. We yep. get the real Santa. Yeah. So, so there you go. Come and see Santa and uh, enjoy a Christmas fair. We'll release more information on that in due course, and we'll also, as I say, do a full podcast on the Christmas fair. But for the time being, um, we'll speak to you in the next podcast. But uh, for me, that's a goodbye. And for me, that's a goodbye as well. Right. Bye. Take care, guys.